So hey guys, today I want to do a quick video on the Garmin collars. So this is like a T5 dog collar. I've worked on several. I have videos from the DC50s, the T5s, T15s. So if you're interested in seeing a lot of other repairs, if you search 52 shed Garmin, you'll see those as well. But I've showed several methods of taking these boards out and solder and desolder, including my desoldering gun but i do want to take time to share some other techniques with you that you might find helpful i just more recently started implementing these techniques as well as seen from northridge fix so the show here on one spot is kind of hard to remove sometimes on this antenna stud i'm going to put some amtec 559 flux from the syringe and then i'm going to add some low melt solder or low temperature solder and you'll see here I'll mix this in with this unleaded solder. And it's going to help melt this solder joint much quicker as well as keep it fluid and liquid longer. So here I'm just working it in and making sure it gets mixed in. And the melt temperature is dramatically lowered here. And you see it's still liquid, still liquid, still liquid. And we'll cut away here in this solid. But um. I'm just going to liquefy it very quickly. You see how quick it liquefies. And I'll go ahead and use my solder pulp here and just get rid of some of it. And that pretty much got it all on top. But you can see some silicone left over here that oozed out from the bottom. So that's one thing that we're battling. I'm going to heat it back up. And this low melt solder will stay liquid for a while. And, and as I pull up and break the silicone, there's no possibility of damaging the solder pad because it's still liquefied and there we go we want it removed just like that that's a picture of it after it's been cleaned up of course here's a picture of the back side of that board where we need to work on the antenna on this one and you see this glob of silicone here we got to work with and you also notice here that these models have a spot on the board and i think i mentioned it in other videos that they at least they had provisions for putting a jack there but didn't at least on this model they didn't so we have to desolder and then solder back on this antenna that sometimes gets cut or damaged so as we look here under the microscope you see the back side of the rf antenna and then we see where the gps antenna solders on here so as we start moving the silicone on this side closest to me here we can kind of pick at it with our fingernail and small screwdriver but then we get under the microscope here and you see even this tiny screwdriver, it's, it's really too large to push too much around these small SMD components. So I'm back now with a small jeweler screwdriver. Now it doesn't look like it under the microscope, but this screwdriver is not much bigger than a needle, but it helps me pinpoint as I'm digging around to remove the silicone without damaging the components. So just patience is the key, as usual, trying to remove any kind of potting or sealant. As we get it away from this sheath here, we can probably go ahead and add some low melt solder. But we want to get as much of this out of the way as possible. I'm going to go ahead and put some flux on here. And we'll work in this low melt solder and see if uh, we can get this to turn loose easier. So I'm sharing this because previously I did share that a 200 watt soldering iron is kind of needed to get these off. It's a pretty big glob of solder and it's on the ground plane. So it's a pretty big pad to heat up. So this low melt solder is kind of like magic. It makes the removal much, much easier. And I'm showing here on purpose that I left the silicone up on top. If you see here, the solder is completely loose, but look what's holding us. So more silicone is hard to see. So we're going to try to get all this loose because we don't want to pull on the pad and ruin this board because it needs that pad to secure. The very tip signal pad is so small it would not secure well if we tried to repair it. And it just might not hold up in a rough environment. So we want to protect these pads at all costs. Showing here again that the solder is liquid and it will stay liquid. So guess what? I have some more silicone holding but there we go and yep you see the little tab right there it was up under the dielectric and i didn't see it but 
Now we just got to remove the rest of the silicone and clean this up very well. Now one thing that's just as important as using the low melt solder, removing all of it is very important because it's more of a brittle solder and it's not strong and of course it doesn't stand up to the heat as well either. But we definitely want to go through twice here and try to remove all of it so it doesn't mess up the solder joint going forward. So we're going to remove all the low melt solder so we can add our leaded solder back on. So we're going to clean this area up as well as we can. Yeah, we can do a little better than that. There we go. Some more Antec 559 Flux. And some leaded 6337 Rosin Core Solder. And there we go. We'll put a little bit on there, maybe some more. That's a good amount to get started with. And a little bit on the tip. Yep. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm going to show you here one of the GPS antennas that my buddy bought to put on his collar. It's this one, and it did have the antenna itself. The LaCoax wire was already prepped and stripped. It actually had plenty of length, so if you had to strip it again, you could. But if we look here, it lined up really, really well, so I like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some flux on here and see if we can get, get the shield soldered on here. And you notice here, I'm trying to hold it by the case, and the wire is just flopping all over the place and... At this point, I'm just showing here, okay, just stop. Let the solder cool. Don't let it come in contact with any SMD components. Go ahead and get us some tweezers with some good grip and get a hold of the wire. And then just let go of the cover. We don't care where it goes, really. We got the wire and we in complete control now. So I want to get the shield down and the tip to be in the right place for the signal. And there we go. Here I'm going to go ahead and solder the tip down while it's in place i like it now i'm going to go back and add a little bit more to the shielding i think it really would have been fine but we can add a little bit more to make sure the whole pad is secure so we'll clean that up i think that looks pretty good a little more alcohol this is 99 percent alcohol by the way just cleaning up after us and after everything looks good, we're going to put our clear silicone back on it for strain relief as well as helping with any water ingress. We're going to put it over the connection and the, the cable coming in. We'll put some on the back side where it comes through later as well. We'll let this dry. And now that it's dry enough to handle, we can see it's very flexible, but we're going to bend it over and put the RF antenna pin back through the board. I'll show an up close video here doing that as well. Like so. And now some of the silicone did get on here. So we got to clean that off and there we go. It's looking a lot better. Put our flux on here. Some more of the leaded solder on our tip. We get started, get the transfer going, and we'll add some more. These microscopes are very handy doing this small work. That about looks pretty good. Let's clean up. I did leave one little hook where my, my soldering iron touched the tip of this pin here. Let's wipe that off. There we go. That looks pretty good. So to share with you this other one that my friend had bought, it had a lot shorter coax cable and it was not stripped. It was red and had the rubber band, but I pretty much just got one shot on this one. It wasn't really long enough to make more than one shot at it, but I was able to strip it. I had some really fine, just regular strippers because it's some very fine coax. So I recommend buying the ones already stripped if you can. And just sharing here that I did put some silicone on this back side. 
your clear silicone sealant where the antenna coax goes into the housing before we put our cover back on. Well, I hope you found this video helpful today. It was just more of a tips video of some things I've learned working on these. And I have many videos of doing repairs as I was first learning. But I get asked a lot, can I work on these? And I do not have a business. I don't work on them for the public. I just was helping a friend out. And I like to post videos as I work on things here on the bench and hopefully um, sharing information to help somebody else. Now, any of the things you find on this workbench that might be helpful, like the low melt solder and the flux, I'll have a link in the description as well as a link to uh, Northridge Fix who has a great low melt solder and flux. So any of those links you click on that are Amazon links or affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.